is Olushek Moli, um, Deputy National Chairman, APC, um, and former Governor of Bekiti State. Can you please tell us um, what is going on in Nigeria right now and why you are involved in whatever it is that's going on in Nigeria? Well, what is going on in Nigeria is that uh, we as a party are trying to fulfill the expectations of the electorate. We won elections uh, because people believe they can trust us better. And uh, we are beginning to also fulfill uh, our election promises. When we were campaigning, the problems, critical ones were, most critical ones were security. Boko Haram was then holding some territories in Nigeria, flying their flag. Today, I must say that there is no part of Nigeria that is under any flag other than the green, white, green of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Boko Haram is severely decimated and uh, they are still not completely wiped out off. There are still occasional uh, uh, suicide bombing and so on, but they are even also getting fewer by the day. So we can say the battle against Boko Haram is won. Uh, it, it is the mop up that will continue. Um, we were talking then about corruption. Corruption had not just death blows, deadly blows on Nigeria, it has laid Nigeria flat comatose. And uh, the, the, the mind boggling stealing that took place during the last regime, uh, people would think is fiction. Um, and it is not, it is reality. And we are seeing now that some of what they stole are being taken from them. The EFCC is working around the club, not just in Nigeria, even outside Nigeria. We saw some photographs yesterday in the dailies of uh, properties in Dubai, owned by the former petroleum minister. Um, everything then was as if the PDP government and its people set up a competition to know who who will be smarter or smartest in in a primitive acquisition of wealth, stealing, and whatever. I think they wanted to crown uh, maybe who will be the king of thieves amongst them. But we, we thank God the Nigerian economy survived it because very few economies in the world could have survived what we went through. Very, very few. But now it has bottomed out and we are now seeing that the only way to go is up. And uh, what we are hoping is that the recovery will be quick so that uh, hope will return to people in full. Um, we, and that from, uh, from uh, the war against corruption, one other game is that impunity is disappearing because the, the, the people were stealing public wealth and they were flaunting it before. And they, they were flaunting it because they knew that there was nothing that government would do to them. Uh, the leadership at the top then seemed to either be warm towards uh, thieves or seem to careless or seem not to know what to do. Um, you cannot say that 
of President Buhari. We thank God for that. He does not have any tolerance for stealing. He also knows what to do. That what to do is to get the EFCC to go after them and recover whatever they can get and put them under prosecution. Um, his attitude, his body language and everything uh, is negative to impunity uh, by those who are stealing. I'm not saying that nobody uh, steals again. No, only God can do that kind of miracle. But what we are saying is that if they are caught, they know that they will pay for it. So there is no... Uh, there, there is no bravado any longer. You cannot steal from us and splash the mud on us at the same time as a country. Um, we, Nigeria is definitely on the right track. We as a, a party also know that we have to continue to contribute a lot to managing the sensitivities, various sensitivities that you know surround the uh, the way the public perceives our party and the way the public uh, also uh, perceives their own responsibility to governors because you cannot have. Uh, a government that will not be supported, that will do well. That will be expecting a very loud clap from a one-hand man. Unless he's going to bang his hand against the table or whatever. If it is a clap, it, that uh, will be a miracle. So, I want to uh, also seize this opportunity to encourage our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. Remember home. And home is not just a place you should look at for sentiments. Yes, there are sentiments. There are also investment opportunities there. There is virtually nowhere in the world where you could grow your capital faster than you can do in Nigeria. Uh, so, it is not just for the sentiment of this is your country. It is also for the reality that this is a very fertile ground for your investments. Uh, please consider Nigeria and uh, you will be very glad you do. Um, so, that is my advice. Let's talk a little bit about your candidacy. Um, we know that you were a former uh, governor in the Kitty State, and now you're very for another round. Tell us why. Well, uh, basically, first I went to do it because I want my party to win, and I think that my coming into it improves our chance of winning. But having done that, I believe I can bring change in a way that is not, not likely to even be you know, perceived or projected uh, in ordinary senses. Uh, I know that all of us have been operating everywhere in the world and leaving our younger ones, the next generation behind, gradually. It's, the gap is more in some societies than in some societies. But the gap is there everywhere. It's also there in America. The, 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 the uh, standard of living keeps dropping from uh, generation to generation. I believe that it is time for us as humanity to put a stop to this slide. And we must, it must take 
the consciousness of government. It must take government putting together a Marshall plan to say, look, the standard of our children must be better than our own standard. And it must be a concerted effort that wipes away some of those obstacles of frustration that make young people get so disenchanted that some of them will take up arms and kill innocent people in nightclubs, in, you know, in uh, party venues and so on. Or that will make some of them become suicide bombers in the hands of uh, terrorists. Um, I want to say that there is a common denominator in all these crimes we are seeing. That is, it's the young people that are being uh, used, the young people that are being used or that are using themselves. You will hardly get a 60-year-old uh, uh, suicide bomber. But because the frustration in the 60-year-old is probably not as intense as that of a 20-something-year-old. The 20-something-year-old who sees his sky coming down, the sky you know, on top of him is coming down. He knows that if he does not do something, he will end up squeezed. And he doesn't want to get squeezed without giving a fight. Some of them will direct their attentions in a negative sense. These reactions can be avoided if we put together a proper attention to the future of the youth. What we want to do in Ekiti is to start this experiment. We don't have the answers now. We are already getting in some of the answers that will help us. But we want to say that my attitude is I don't have the answers. But like D.F. Kennedy, uh, uh, set a target for NASA then to land man on the moon within 10 years in 1963 and they were able to beat the target. We are telling our people, create enough opportunities within here for, so that the average young person can see a clear line of sight to prosperity. Um, without without necessarily the dreaming. So we are we are working, we are thinking, but that is the main job we want to do. We want to create a new social and economic order. We want to change the way government thinks and we want to change the way people also uh, think in relation to government. It is going to be a very, very big thing and we believe that by God's grace we will achieve it. One of the concerns of the people in diaspora is that they don't feel like they're needed. They, some of them have interviewed them and they feel like their resources are not needed. Can you speak to that? Well, their resources are needed. Uh, but let me say this. Our diaspora should borrow a leaf from the Irish. A few decades back, we know what Ireland was and what the image of the average Irish, especially in Europe, was. But especially the Irish, the people of Irish descent in America and a few other places turned their attention to Ireland. And today, Ireland is up. If Nigerians or if Africans in diaspora decide to turn their attention home investment-wise, I can tell you, in a decade, we will be talking about a different environment in Africa, in Nigeria especially. So, I want to tell the diaspora, they are needed. 
all of us are needed. This job is for all of us. It is not for those of us at home alone. If we all want to see a better society, we all must be prepared to contribute something, however little, to it. And also, I think this will also uh, apply not just to investment, but, but also to even bringing in the ideas on how to create a new society. Some of them may be in a position to contribute just ideas, but ideas that can work. Please bring your ideas. And one last thing, uh, for those who are not even diaspora, we have <coughs> other international bodies that are interested that are closely watching Nigeria, our economy and all that. So we have people in America and other parts of the world. How can they be a part of helping Nigeria, Ikiti, once we are past this electoral uh, uh, season in Nigeria? How can they be a part of it? How, can, wh how do you see them helping us out? Or even assisting or being a part, partnering with us? Well, the, the way I see it is first, the, they should take active interest in what's going on. Because you cannot invest, for example, where you don't have information. They should take active interest. Fortunately, the new information order is rapidly clearing uh, dark shades and putting everywhere in bright focus. They should take interest. And it is from taking interest that they will identify areas of opportunities. You see, we are not asking them to come and do charity alone. Well, if they do charity, that's very good. But then, even for charity, you will have to have information to know what you will help and what you will not. So, the first bus stop is the bus stop of information. Let them take interest in what is going on. And when they take interest in what is going on, the rest will develop from there. There is this concept that um, a politician, particularly a governor, is not able to um, go after what they really want to do for their community unless um, there is somebody else that can really help, somebody that is of, um, right above them within the political chain. Um, is this a fallacy? Is this something, you know, yeah, is this a fallacy? I don't understand that. I would believe it's a fallacy. Okay. Um, because a lot of times what the, the situations that uh, the diaspora has talked about, they said, oh, um, even if the governor wants to do something, he can't do it unless he goes, you know, runs it through. Um, yeah. Well, I, I think I would say these are some of the fallacies that people will clear out if they move closer right. and seek information. Uh, you know, they, some 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 people will tell you that in other countries it takes uh, uh, seventeen hours of darkness to make a day around the year. But if you try to seek out information, you easily dismiss it and say, no, this is not possible. There are days of the year when there are longer days, there are days when there are uh, longer nights. And people will. So people should not just sit and transmit falsehood from mouth to mouth. It is not true. It is a fallacy. When you are a politician and you are voted to office, you are voted to office on the strength of what you told the people and on the strength of the popularity of your platform, which is your party, and on the strength of the acceptability 
of your opponents. These are all factors that add up together to, to create opportunities for people to win elections. And when you win elections, nobody uh, is your is your super boss who will now hold a cane behind you to say this is what you should do, this is what you shouldn't do. It is not true. It is not true. And finally, sir, um, can you dream a dream for Nigeria? Can you dream a dream for Nigeria and then dream a dream for Ikiti where you're veering for? What is your dream? My dream for Nigeria is a country that uh, optimizes its capabilities and that derives strength from its own people, first and foremost. The same also as my dream for Ikiti. Uh, whose people feel as much concerned as they should be and as nationals of other countries are, whose patriotism from its own people, especially in the diaspora, is not one way. It's not about what they can get all the time, but what they can contribute also as well. For example, we'll talk about diaspora voting. Diaspora voting definitely is desirable. It will cost government also money. Whichever way you look at it, there will be registrations, there will be deployment of technology and so on. But people in diaspora, how many do file in their tax returns to Nigeria? The diaspora, the American diaspora will vote because they are also filing in their tax returns from wherever they are and that money I don't know what percentage of the total income of America it is, but it amounts to something. Our people should contribute the attitude that if other people are doing it, why can't they do it? Why can't, for example, the people in the diaspora, even if it is a development levy, and we are sure that even if they will have a committee to manage it, to say this payment system is as easy as uh, eating cookies now. They can set up a payment system, monitor it, get people to pay uh, development levies, and at the end of every year, before the next year, aggregate and say this is how we want it to be spent for the benefit of our people. But if people are not doing all that, um, they are also reducing their sphere of influence in a way. So I want to appeal to Nigerians, to Africans in the diaspora. Let us try and help government, our various governments, to imbibe a new thinking. There is a lot that we can do for one another and that we can do to also take away what I would call the shame of underdevelopment. The shame of underdevelopment because uh, if your country is not doing well, you are not doing well, no matter how you pretend to be. Um, so let us appeal to the diaspora to please do a new thinking. It is you that can do it yourself, uh, government, cannot do it for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for... If there's anything that we can do to come together to at least those who are doing businesses, even if you're not doing businesses, um, you've heard him. Taxes is one way that you can, you can stake a claim and actually be somebody that is helping out to make Nigeria better greater and the giant of africa so thank you so much for watching and until next time be inspired be motivated be of sentimental value know that you are the hero in your own life story so write it write it brilliantly bye for now